Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to talk a little bit about your spare lenses that you have for your fiber laser and making a nice little storage box for them. I don't know about you, but these came in just a cardboard box. They've been destroyed. I've been just storing them in the bottom of my toolbox. Really not a safe way to do that. So I thought today we'd take a few minutes and build this nice little storage box. Um, we're going to use a box generator for this. We're going to use three different materials. We're going to use some uh, eight inch ply, or in this case, two sided unisub. I've got some scraps laying around we're going to use. We're also going to use some half inch closed cell foam. I'll show you how to use that. It's a lot of fun. And then we're going to get into uh, using some 16 inch sign plastic, two color and two different colors. And uh, before you know it, we're going to have a nice little storage box for your lenses. Let's go check it out. We are going to go ahead and start in the box generator before we get into light burn. This is my favorite box generator. I'm going to leave, uh, I'll leave a link to this box generator in the description of the video. Um, and so the nice thing about this is you can kind of select which one you want. If you just click on one of these pictures, it'll actually take you to the design module where you need to start inputting your information. And the one that we're going to do is this one right here. Um, but before we get to that particular uh, parameters for those boxes that we're going to make, there's one thing that I highly recommend you do, and it's called a burn test card. Um, this will ensure that uh, when you put in the settings for your tabs, that they fit nicely together. And so before we get into making our, uh, our pattern for our box, we're going to generate a burn test card. I'll show you a picture of what I mean up here. And uh, the nice thing about this is once you make these couple of cards, you can use them uh, for this material and it, it'll just make a really nice product for you. So let's go to the burn test. Okay, the first thing we're going to do before we get started on our actual box uh, design, we're going to do what they call a burn test card. And this will give you the burn rate that you need to input into this tool to get your finger joints to fit nicely. And so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom part of this website. Right here is your burn test cards. This step I highly recommend you do before you get started on your design because this is going to ensure that all these little finger joints go together nicely. And once you do this for this size of material, you can use that burn rate to make all kinds of things. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And the first thing we're going to do, we don't need a burn test card that's four inches by four inches. So we're going to shrink this down to 75 millimeters. So that's roughly three inches by three inches. Our steps uh, for each side of the card are going to be 0.01. This will make more sense to you here in just a minute. We're only going to make one pair of burn test cards. That's all we should need. The thickness of our Unisub double sided is 3.1 millimeters. Going to put that in. We want it in SVG format. We don't need a reference, so I'm going to go ahead and put just zero there. And we're going to go ahead and start our burn test uh, at 0.1. Most lasers range anywhere from 0.07 to 0.12, and so you might have to mess with this a little bit. You'll see what this does here in just a minute. Just remember the bigger the values, the tighter the fit. So for some reason, you make this card and the, the finger joints are sloppy. You need to go up in, in uh, size. And so what we'll go ahead is we'll go ahead and download this. And you can see it's downloaded and we'll go ahead and get it imported into Lightburn. Okay, we've jumped into Lightburn now. We're going to go ahead and import that uh, download. So I'm going to come over here to File, Import, go to my Burn Test, say OK. And it's not in the colors that I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold down my Shift key and select a layer. That's the black layer. I'm going to come down here to red because red is cut for me. Also, blue is engraved. So I'm going to hold the Shift key, click the uh, green come over here to blue. I'm going to come over here to my Unisub, engrave, select it, 
My blue is in gray, is a, a, a selected, so I'm going to say assign. And then I want to cut eighth inch unisub. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select my red and assign that. And now I've got all of my settings. I'm ready to go ahead and uh, cut out this test card. And you can see what happens here is each side has a size. And what you're going to do is you're going to match up this size with 0.12 to this side with 0.12 and see how it fits. And you're going to try all four, four sides to see which is your better burn rate. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this cut out and then we'll figure out what our burn rate is. Once we have our test cards cut out, you'll notice that each side has a measurement. So we started at 0 0.10, go to 0 0.11, 12, and 13. And the idea behind these test cards is that I match up each um, edge and see if it fits. So we'll start at 0 0.13. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of seeing if these will come together at all. You don't want them real tight. That Then there's no room for glue. So the 0.13 is going to be too, um, too tight. So we need to go down. So let's go down to our 0.12. So we'll match up this 0.12 with this 0.12 and see, and you can see that that's, that's fitting pretty good, but it's still pretty tight. So let's go down to 0 0.11, 0 0.11 here, 0 0.11 here. That's still pretty tight, not, not loose enough. So let's go down to 0 0.10 and that comes in, that's nice. Now the way you normally check these is if they come together nice and they stay like that that's what you want so not too tight but tight enough where you could actually put this box together and so our burn rate um, that we're going to enter into our pattern for our box for our lens is going to be 0 0.10 and that's what these burn rate test cards are for they work great now that we've got our burn rate uh, determined and it's 0 0.10 we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the pattern of the box that we want to create go ahead and double click that and that will jump us into the design parameters for this particular box and so the dimensions of our box are going to be it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter width and height and then the top is going to be an uh, 1.38 tall and the bottom is going to be an inch and seven eighths tall. And so what we'll want to do is we'll want to turn that all into millimeters. So <clears throat> this, it will, I'll just give you kind of a quick overview of this particular layout. Um, most of the time, you don't have to worry about the settings for the chest settings or the finger joints. Um, all we really want to do is going to be uh, using the the X, the Y, and the height, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll also input our thickness, our SGV. We're not going to do a reference, and most importantly, this is where you're going to put that burn rate, and that burn rate was at 0.1, which is what their default is, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and key this information in, and then we'll download the uh, the file and we'll import it into Lightburn. So I'm going to go ahead and input these, uh, all this information, then we'll come back and I'll go over it with you. Okay, we've got all the uh, information keyed in. So our, remember I told you that our box is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And so if you take that 4.25 times 25.4, we'll turn that into millimeters. In other words, for every millimeter, there's 25.4. And so our millimeters are 107.95 by 107.95. The height of the bottom of the box is gonna be 1.78 inches, or 1.875 times 25.4 is 47.625. So that's the, the height of the bottom of the box. Then this check mark here means that these dimensions are going to be considered outside. So this is as big as it's going to get. If you deselect this, it will be interior measurements. Okay, our lid height, which is going to be the top, which will be a uh, one and three eighths inches, which is 1.375 times 25.4, 
is 34.95. We've got our thickness of 3.1. We're not gonna do any uh, tabs or QR codes or anything like that. Um, now this is really kind of a handy little thing. If you generate a QR code and save it, you can actually scan the QR code in and it will give you this exact box again. So this is kind of a handy option to have if you want to, uh, you want to uh, get back to this file and generate it. I'm not going to have any labels. I'm not going to print out a reference. My inner corners are going to be loop. And most importantly, my burn rate, this is going to tell you how tight or loose your finger joints are going to fit. And remember, based on our test, our burn rate was 0.1. So I'm going to leave that alone. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and download that to our downloads folder. And we'll import this into Lightburn and go forward. We've jumped into Lightburn. I'm going to go ahead and import that SVG that we downloaded. And so we'll go here, here. And it looks like it's uh, all laid out. Now you can rearrange the way this is laid out based on your material. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn it red, just because red is my cut color. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go over to my library. I'm going to go all the way down to Unisub two-sided, flip that open, go to eighth inch, go to cut, and come over here and assign the cut settings that I have for my red layer. And we've got that in ready to go. So now based on uh, the scraps that I have, I will go ahead and cut out all these 10 pieces. And once we get them pulled off the laser, we'll go ahead and put this thing together. At this point, we're gonna just go ahead and collect our pieces off the laser, lay out our box, make sure that we've got all of our pieces. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit all this together and just use some blue painter's tape to hold it together to make sure it's all gonna work. And then I don't usually glue the individual pins. What I do is I put a seam of what they call 2P10. It's a commercial grade um, CA glue and then spray some activator on it. And I find that that works out pretty well and it's a lot quicker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this box together, uh, put some blue painter's tape here and there just to hold it together, make sure all the pieces are gonna work. And if it all works, we'll glue it together. We've got this box snapped together. If you get your burn rate right, you don't even need uh, anything to hold this box together. There's no glue, no tape. It's snapped together really nicely. I do recommend if you're gonna be doing boxes like this, uh, get yourself a little uh, mallet uh, pattern off of Etsy and put it together. It, uh, it makes it nice for tapping these together. You can get this on Etsy. Um, just look uh, under wooden mallet patterns and you there's different sizes of these um, I use this a lot when I'm making my boxes so we've got our bottom of our box you notice we've got our hinges here and then the way this hinge works is you notice that I don't have this tapped in all the way in other words it's sticking out a little bit and the reason why I want to do that is I'm gonna go ahead and put this pin into this hole and then that pin into that hole. And then what I'll do is I'll tap these together like that. And now um, I have the ability to go ahead and close this. And we use these little uh, pins this way and we knock this into place. Probably not gonna be able to do it on camera, but that's how that hinge works. So we glue this little pin in place and that way that hinge will work properly. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, hinges tapped in. We'll go ahead and uh, glue it up. Now the way I glue these up typically is I'll probably glue this one before I actually put it together. Um, and all I'm going to do is just put a bead of 2P10 on the perimeter and spray some activator in there and uh, this box will be bulletproof. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, we've got our box all together. It's all glued up. Hinge works nicely. 
what I did, like I said, is I just put the glue on the perimeter and then spray the activator on it. It just saves a lot of time than trying to glue all those pins. You can glue the pins, just a little mess here, but I've never had a box fall apart gluing it this way. Everything matches up nice. And so this box is complete. Now all we've got to do is cut some foam for it. So we're going to cut some half inch foam inserts for it and also make um, an ID tag for the front to label our lens. And we'll have a nice little storage box for our fiber lens, fiber laser lens. Again, this is Unisub double sided. You can get it at JP Plus. I'll put a link to this material. This material is used for sublimation, but I really like it for these kind of things. This out white shell is very durable, very hard. Um, and it's just a clean look. I like the way it goes together. I use this Unisub for all kinds of construction stuff. It works even great for signs. It engraves well, it'll engrave to black, and uh, it's a little pricey, but it's very sturdy and durable. Let's go ahead and go forward, and next we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements. So what I'm gonna do in light burn is I'm gonna get this, this is uh, four inches by four inches on the inside. And so we're gonna cut out a couple of uh, pieces of half inch foam for our inserts and go forward. Okay, I generated a couple of uh, squares. These are four inch squares. Um, that's the inside dimension of that box. So we've got one just regular square that's going to go on the bottom of the box. Then this one is going to go on the top of the box. And this is an inch and three quarter inch circle that's centered in the middle of this square to accommodate the top of that lens. And so I'm using eight speed power of 60 on this 35 100 watt thunder laser. Uh, it cuts foam beautifully. I'm using an inch and a half lens. Uh, in focus and lots of air. So let's go ahead and preview this just to make sure we're good and kick this to the laser and I'll show you how this foam cuts. It cuts great. So let's just say uh, foam, kick it to the laser. We'll head over to the laser and get this cut out. I always, I always flame test my uh, my foam. So what you want to do is you want to just set this little piece of foam on fire and make sure you get a nice yellow flame out of that. If you have any other color like a green, especially a green, any other color other than yellow, don't cut this foam in your layer, uh, laser. It probably contains formaldehyde. I get this from a local fabric shop. Um, never had a problem with it. But if you look up flame testing foam, They'll tell you that you want to just burn a little piece. Um, make sure that you're getting nothing but a yellow flame out of the deal. And you can see that's exactly what we have. And that way you know you're not going to get into trouble with any toxic fumes in your laser. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut this half inch foam out. With this inch and a half lens, because the beam spot is so small, um, you can see that it takes very little out of the foam. Got to cut it slow with lots of air. Now, if I was going to cut anything thicker than this, it would be uh, probably with a four inch lens and lots of air.
surprisingly enough, the flashback doesn't melt the back of the foam either. You'll see here in a minute when I take this off, uh, but the back is just as nice as the front. Sorry for all the noise. So let's take a look at the edge quality of this foam since I got all the noise shut off. As you can see, that it's uh, no flashback on the back side. Now, are they perfectly uh, parallel cuts? No, you're not gonna get that even with half inch foam. Um, but for what we're doing, it's gonna be fine. And uh, same thing, no flashbacks on the back. Really a nice cut. Let's go put it in the box. We've got our uh, ID badge laid out and it's roughly, Looks like three and a quarter inches by an inch and a quarter high. That's the perimeter. So the way I did this is these two lines, I'm going to go ahead and cut out, uh, out of yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this line and this engraving, and that will be in red. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to do is when I select this line to make this interior badge, I'm going to come over here, open up my uh, cut color, and I'm going to put in a 0 .007 kerf. So I'm going to grow that perimeter outside line so it fits a little bit better uh, when this is cut out. So this, this inside badge will fit nicely into this um, yellow frame. And so that's what we're going to do. I just kept the font simple. Now, I'm not 100% sure this is the settings I'm going to end up on. We'll go over the laser and, and see what it looks like. But I'm going to start at 500 millimeters per second, 20% power. I'm going to turn the high air off. Remember, when you're engraving uh, two-color sign plastic, you do not want but very little airflow. And so we're just going to have to play with that uh, to make sure that that pink or that red's not getting into the white making pink. And that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to send this over to the laser. We'll go ahead and get this cut out. This, because there's no engraving, this section is going to be a piece of cake. But when we jump over into the red with the uh, engraving, that's where it's going to get just a little bit tricky. So let's go check it out. Okay, wanted to show you the evolution of this red to white sign plastic. Um, don't think for a minute that this is easy, guys, but this method gets you in the ballpark the quickest. So all I did is I, I started at 500, actually, 500 and like 22. And uh, you can see that there's just, I'm not getting rid of the wet, uh, red. So I went, I kept the speed the same, all 500 millimeters per second, and 22, 24, 26. And this is 500 millimeters per second at 29% power with next to no air, just enough to keep the lens cool and clean. Then I went into my engraving. Now this was defocused. I've got an inch and a half lens on here and I normally defocus about uh, a millimeter to two millimeters, but because this text is fairly fine, I'm, I wasn't able to do that. So what I did here, uh, this was uh, 318 uh, lines per inch defocused at two millimeters. You can see that it's just not clear. So what I did here was I took my lines per inch down to 254 and only defocused my lens one millimeter. So I'm out about uh, 11 and a half millimeters because a normal uh, focus for that inch and a half lens is 10 and a half millimeters. And you can see this is exactly what we need to do. So don't give up. Just like I said, just do little squares until you get a nice bright white and um, then start playing with you know what you need. I could clearly see here that um, me defocusing that lens was killing my font, and so I had to get it more in focus to be able to consistently burn away that red. So we'll go ahead and generate our uh, labels now, but wanted you to see that even as much as I do, uh, I had to go through this process. This is eighth inch. The coating on this particular row mark is pretty thick, 
And so don't think for a minute that just because you've got a, your setting dialed in for this particular row mark, and if you go to like 16th inch or uh, another thickness, that it's going to be the same. Probably not. So let's go ahead and get these cut out. Okay, one last thing I wanted to demonstrate to you on the effects of airflow and your edge quality. So I cut this tag with no airflow in my engraving, but then I did have air assist on when I cut it. And you can see what happens is that that red color is wiped on the side. So you get kind of this pinkish hue. It doesn't look very good. So this was the air assist on compared to this one that I just cut that is absolutely stark white. It has no color wiped on the edge at all. This is a much better looking tag, especially if you were going to see the exterior. Now, it won't matter because we're going to put this, you know, we're going to put this uh, border around it. But as a rule, when you're cutting your sign plastic, you do not want airflow. And that's the reason why. You can see there's a big difference between the right one that's got the color wiped across the edge and the left one that is uh, stark white looks really good. So anyway, at this point, let's go ahead and put these badges on these boxes and wrap up this video. I really appreciate you guys hanging in here with me. I know this video was a little bit longer. I sure appreciate it. Hey, if you like the content, give me a thumbs up. If you uh, haven't subscribed, please do so. I really appreciate it. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button and contribute to the channel. It's those contributions that are making this content possible. Thank you. Well, that was a little bit longer video, but we covered a lot of territory. We learned how to use the double-sided Unisub. It's really a lot of fun. Um, I use it a lot. It's very durable. We got to use some foam, cut some, cut some half inch foam. Remember to flame test your foam before you start cutting it in your laser. You want to be safe. And we also learned some in and outs about some two color sign plastic. Um, the black, uh, the yellow to black is a piece of cake. Typically it's no problems at all. The red to white is always tricky. So hopefully this content gave you some information that you can make some successful projects. Until next time, thanks again and have a great day.